What's up guys? Welcome to Be A Metal Fabricator. In today's video, we're gonna be going over MIG welding, some of the basics, and a few tips and tricks. So stick around to the end, and let's get into it. Guys, I wanna interrupt the video real quick to let you know I'm gonna be hosting classes here at the shop doing hands-on stuff. We're gonna be learning the MIG welder, TIG welder, English wheel, patch panel replacement, and even a take-home pamphlet for you to reference whenever you go back home. Now check out the website for the details. Let's get you the skills you need to tackle those projects. Let's get back to the video. So here in the shop, I'm using the Millermatic 211. This is a great machine. It works perfect whenever I need to do some patch panels, suspension work, welding up frame holes, anything like that. This machine could totally handle. I'm not sponsored by Miller. I'm just showing you what I use. And I really like this machine. It's really nice. And it's got some pretty cool features on it. If you're pretty new to welding and you're not too sure how to set up the settings, it does have an auto set feature, which is pretty accurate. I don't tend to use it. I like to weld a little bit hot whenever I'm welding. So I always kind of crank it up. If you're new to MIG welding at all, let's go over some of the basics that you're gonna need to know if you decide to buy you a machine, no matter what machine that is. Okay, so first thing we're gonna look at is shielding gas. This shielding gas for MIG welding, when you're MIG welding mild steel, is gonna be 75-25. 75% argon, 25% CO2 or carbon dioxide. Now, these are your regulators for your machine. Most of you guys probably already know this, but this is your high pressure, this is your low pressure. This reads your tank right here. This reads your line pressure. So here's your adjust valve. What you wanna run is usually between 25 and 30 CFH. Now real quick, let's go over the MIG welding wire a little bit. There's many different diameters that you can choose from. The most common are like 0 0.029, 0 0.030, and 0.035. In the automotive industry, I tend to stick with 0 0.035, ER70S-6. Now there's also ER70S-3. Those are the two most common types available. And I'm not gonna go into too much about the details and the differences, but it has to do something with the deoxidizers in each, and one is higher, one is lower. But I tend to work with ER70S-6, and it works great for me, so I'm sure it'll work good for you. So on this welder and on most welders, underneath the door it has a chart that gives you some reference points on what settings to use depending on your diameter of the wire that you're using, the thickness of the metal. So if you're kind of confused on what settings you should use, lift the door up and check this out and that should give you a good reference point. When setting up your welder, there's always a balance between the voltage and the wire speed. Now, if your wire speed is too slow, what's going to happen is you're gonna start getting burned back. The wire's gonna start burning back into the torch. And if your wire speed is too fast, it's gonna start pushing your torch and almost bouncing and arcing off of the panel that you're welding. So I'm gonna be welding 20 gauge sheet metal. And according to the chart, it's telling me that the voltage needs to be at 3.4 and 30 on the wire speed. But like I said earlier, I like to weld a little bit hot. So I'm gonna set this voltage to about four and then pull the wire speed up to about 40. So one way to tell that you got a good weld is definitely penetration. You want penetration on the backside of the weld no matter what weld you're doing. Now. If your weld is too cold, you're not gonna have that penetration and your weld's gonna be really tall. And if you're too hot, your weld's gonna be really flat or you're gonna start burning holes. Those are two things to look out for when you're welding sheet metal. Now what I like to do is always have a pair of wire cutters close by and I cut down the electrode everywhere from an eighth to a quarter of an inch before I strike an arc and that ensures a nice clean weld when you start. So now that we have our welder set up, let's go ahead and do a couple of tacks on these and then we'll do a small stitch weld. I like to do stitch welds when I'm welding sheet metal because that allows the metal to cool down without me blowing holes in it. And also I always like to keep an air hose nearby. That way I could cool the weld off as I go. That way I'm not warping sheet metal as I'm welding, especially if I'm welding on cars. So before we tack these coupons, and throw a bead across this, I just want to talk a little bit about torch angle. So your torch angle should be about 45 degrees parallel to the panel, and there's two different ways of welding. You can pull your weld as you go along, or you could push your weld as you go along. Now, I like to push the weld. It's just something that I practiced and that I'm used to, and that's just the way I do it. So let's go and throw a couple of tacks on, this, on these coupons, and we'll throw a bead across it. So 
So if you heard that weld right there, it sounds like sizzling bacon, and that's kind of what you're looking for. You want that nice, crisp sound. Now, if you look at it, I've got adequate penetration on the back side of these coupons, and the welds are nice and flat. They're not too tall, and they're not too flat. So that's telling me that this welder is set up real nice for this sheet metal. So let's go ahead and throw a little bead across here. Another thing you always want to do is brace your torch as you go across. It just helps with consistency because you always want to have a consistent bead across the way and you always kind of want to be almost robotic with pulling the trigger. You want it to have the same time, the same speed and that ensures a nice consistent weld. So I got a bead going across there and you can see it's nice and consistent across that weld right there. And we got adequate penetration on the back too and that's what you're looking for. When you're stitch welding, you don't want your tacks to be too far apart. You want them to almost overlap the previous weld. If they're too far apart, you could get fish eyes in it, which are the little dimples inside each tack. And you want to cover that. So you want to make sure you overlap your previous tack and have a nice consistent weld. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.